Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to create variables in SPSS. Even before I proceed to demonstrate how to create variables in SPSS, may I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also, like and share my videos. As you can see, this is the interface of SPSS. This is completely a blank sheet in SPSS. I have not loaded any data. I want to create three new variables in SPSS. If you are a beginner and you want to create three new variables in SPSS, how do you do this? Firstly, SPSS resembles just, a, just like a Excel spreadsheet. Here, the columns are called as variables. You can see here, each of these columns are called as variables. And the rows can be called as either cases or records. Usually, what happens is, if you have the first customer, the first customer's details is entered along the first row. The second customer's details are entered along the second row, so on and so forth. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to create three new variables in SPSS. Let me draw your attention to the left-hand side bottom corner. As you can see here, there are two types of view. The first type of view is what is called as the data view. And the second type of view is what is called as the variable view. Right now, I am in the data view. As the name itself suggests, the data view is the place for you to enter data. You have the variable view. Variable view is the place for you to create new variables. Since I am in the data view, I can't create new variable names here. If you have to create new variables, you have to click on the variable view tab here. Let me go ahead and click on the variable view. What you're seeing now is the variable view. Here, you don't see variables. What you're seeing is the variable attributes. You can clearly see here name, type, width, so on and so forth. What is all this? These are the variable attributes or characteristics. In this video, I want to demonstrate how do you create three new variables. The first variable that I want to create is name. The second variable that I want to create is gender. And the third variable that I'd like to create is salary. As you can see here, I've created three new variables, name, gender, and salary. The moment you create these three new variables, SPSS automatically assigns the type of the variable as numeric. Question is, is name of a person numeric? Of course not. Name of a person is string. So you might want to change the name of a few columns. Before I change some of the variable attributes, let me go back to the data view. As you can see, right now I'm in the variable view. Let me go ahead and click on the variable view. My apologies, let me go ahead and click on the data view. In the data view, you can see the three new variables that I had created in the variable view are displayed. The first is name, second variable is gender, and the third is salary. In the data view, you can go ahead and type the observations under each and every column. Before I go ahead and create the data, let me go back to the variable view and adjust or make changes to the variable properties. Let's talk about name. SPSS has assigned the type of the variable as numeric. Clearly, name of a person is not numeric. You will have to change this. How do you change the type of the variable? In this particular cell, you can click on anywhere. When you click on the type cell, 
a new dialog box pops up. Here you can see there are different variable types that SPSS provides. SPSS provides nine different types of variables. I repeat, SPSS provides for nine different variable types. The default option is numeric. You also have the option of comma, dot, scientific notation, date variable. Here you can see the different date formats, dollar, custom currency, string, restricted numeric. These are the nine different types of variables that you can go ahead and create. Clearly, name of a person is string and therefore I'll choose the option string and hit the OK button. You can see here, now the type has been changed to string. You also have the width. Either you can increase the width to a higher number or you can go by the default setting of eight. What does eight mean? When you specify the width as eight, SPSS would allow you to type eight letters for the name column. After width, you see another property which is called as the decimals property. For a string variable, there is no question of having a decimal. However, when you look at the variable salary, which is the third variable that we have created, the default, the default decimal places would be two. So if a person's salary is 320.23, SPSS will display the two digits after the decimal point. Mind you, this is entirely under your control. You can choose to increase the decimals to either four or a lower number of your choice. Let us say you don't want SPSS to display the decimals, in which case you can change this to zero. So we have learned about the type property, the width property, and the decimals property. Now let's go on to labels. What exactly do we mean by label? Label refers to a short description of the variable name. I repeat, under the label section, you will be giving a short description of the variable name. When you look at the first cell here, that is name, it is quite unclear as to what are we talking about. Are we talking about the employee's name? Or are we talking about the employee's father name? Or are we talking about the employee's mother's name? Or is it the company name that we are talking about? It is quite unclear. Therefore, in the label section, we can come here and type a short description saying employee name. This would be employee name. Similarly, you can also type employee gender. This would be employee's gender. Next, what you have is salary. You can again come here and type this as employee's salary. Now, it is quite clear what are we talking about. The first column is employee's name. Second column would be employee's gender. And the third column would be employee's salary. As you scroll to the right side, you can specify other properties as well. You have what is called as values. Values come into picture when you want to convert a string variable into a numeric variable. The second variable gender is a string type. Gender can take two values, male or female. Now, I might want to convert or assign the value one for males and the value zero for females. How do you do this? In the value cell, you can click on 
any region, this will open up what is called as value labels. There are two boxes here. The first box is the value box and the second one is the label box. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to type one and give it a label of mail. I can click on add. Type zero here and give the label as female. Click on add. If you have additional categories in the column, you can go on to give newer values like three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. Let me go ahead and click on OK. Right now, what we have is we have created values for the variable gender. Next, we have an important column, which is called as the missing column. Let me go ahead and select this particular cell for salary. There are three options under missing values. The first is no missing values. Second is discrete missing values. Typically, if you're working for a market research data, there is a practice wherein blank entries, blank cells are coded as either 99 or 999. In which case, you can go ahead and type this as 99 or 999. It is entirely the call of the user as to what number would he like to assign. There's another option which says range plus one optional discrete missing value. Here you can specify the lower value as well as the higher value. Additionally, you can also provide the discrete value for missing cases. I would suggest you can ignore this particular option and go with the default no missing values and hit the OK button. Let me scroll to the right side. You have what is called as the columns. The default number is eight. You can go on to either increase the column space or decrease the column space. Next, you have the alignment option. In the alignment option, you have three types of alignment, either left alignment, right alignment, or center alignment. If you've used Excel, this will be very, very familiar to you. I will leave it at the default setting of right alignment. Next, you have the measurement type. Now, this is very, very interesting. Let me go ahead and show you the different measurement types. In SPSS, there are three types of variables. Either a variable is scale or it can be ordinal. And the third option here is nominal. A variable can be called a scale if it can be expressed in units. Typically, temperature, height, width, length, volume are all examples of scale variables. Next, you have ordinal data. Typically, whenever there is ordering amongst the observations of a variable, you can call it as ordinal data. In market research, we normally speak about Likert scale variable or five point scale. That's a classic example of ordinal variable. Then you have the nominal type of variable where there is no hierarchy. Gender, marital status, name of a person are all examples of nominal data. So in the second row, I'm going to change this to nominal. The salary variable can be converted as scale data. The last column here is what is called as role. This is mostly useful if you're doing multivariate analysis, wherein you can specify the role of a particular variable. Either you can treat a particular variable as an independent variable, in which case the role would be input, or if the variable happens to be a dependent variable, you can call it as target. I leave it at the default option of input. Just to summarize the discussion that we have had so far, we are in the variable view. 
in the variable view, we have different properties of variable. The first thing that you need to do when you're creating variables in SPSS is to click on the variable view and to type the variable names. Once you type the variable names, you can specify the properties of the variable. Some of the properties include variable type, width, decimal, label. Further, you have other properties like values, missing, column, alignment. Then you have measurement and role. In this video, I've created only three variables. However, you can go on to add as many variables as possible. SPSS claims that we can create at least 2 billion columns. Once you create the variable names, I can go back to data view. In data view, you can see name, gender, and salary column headings appear. Under the name column, I can type the name of some of the employees. Let's say the first employee is Suraj. The second person may be Kamath. The third individual may be Meena. Like this, you can go on typing values under the name column. Next, we have gender. Suraj is a male, so I can go ahead and type male. Kamath again is a male. Here, I'm going to type male. Let me do this again. When it comes to Meena, I'll choose female. SPSS displays this particular column as string. If you want to see the values that we have provided for male and female, at the right-hand side top corner, you have value labels. Let me go ahead and click on value labels. You can see here, SPSS displays the value for males and females. Since we have assigned the value of one for males, SPSS displays one for Suraj and Kamath, and it displays the value of zero for Meena because she's a female employee. Let me now go ahead and specify values for salary. Suraj's salary may be 10,000. Kamath's salary may be 20,000 and Meena's salary may be 30,000. So this is how you can create variable names and type data after you create variable names. So in this video, we have seen what is the difference between data view as well as variable view. We have seen how to create three new variables. We have explored the different options that are present in the variable view. Further, we have also seen how to specify variable type, variable values, so on and so forth. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos. Thank you very much for watching this particular video. Have a great day ahead.